Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to go through some Phalaenopsis that I have in my collection and how I care for them. So I'm quite the beginner orchid collector, so take this with a grain of salt. Just want to like, you know, give some tips here and there. And yeah, if you guys have any input, uh, please comment them down below. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. But before we do so, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And yeah, let's get started. Let me show you kind of the cute little Phalaenopsis that I have. Um, so these are more like the novelty types. So they usually bloom in the summer as opposed to like the fall and winter. So something like this. Um, this one is called the Phalaenopsis uh, violaceae crossed with Qian Lung Red Element. So I like to write the names on the little pot inside because I don't really like those tags that stick out too much. And I generally remember most of my orchid names just because I don't have too many of them. But yeah, this one has a really pretty purple flower and there's actually two little buds about to open. So there's that one at the top and then there's one, this one down here as well. So there's actually like three different flower spikes producing these flowers. And yeah, this one is one of them. And the other one I want to show you, also a little tiny one, is the Phalaenopsis bellina. So this one has a really nice bright kind of like yellowy green outer border with the inside as like a purpley pink color. And these are both really fragrant because this one is the bellina and this one actually has uh, the violaceae, which is also very fragrant as one of the parents. So how I care for these. So in terms of light, these don't require really bright light. I do have them on my plant shelf back there. So there's some grow lights above it, but these would do perfectly fine in my north facing window because that's what where I used to have them sitting and just thriving. They'll still grow flower spikes, they'll grow a little bit slower. So during the non-flowering seasons, the leaves that do grow will be a little bit slower and does take a little bit longer, but that just means you have to water it less, which honestly is even less care that you have to provide it. So if you can't put it in a bright spot, totally fine in darker environments, but obviously not like a completely pitch black room because no orchid is going to be okay with that. But they do tolerate pretty low light, which is why a lot of people like Phalaenopsis. In terms of humidity, these can also withstand pretty low humidity. They're such beginner orchids, which is why I love them so much. There's so many varieties out there, so many crosses, hybrids, uh, species, whatever. And they could just tolerate super low humidity super high humidity as long as there's good airflow. I personally have them in like 40-50% humidity so not super super high and when I didn't have it close to the humidifier it was probably closer to 30% and it never showed any signs of it being unhappy. Like it didn't drop leaves, it didn't drop like buds, it continued to spike so I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously if you can just keep it in a nice well ventilated area you could have it in pretty high humidity and it'll be okay. How I water these? I like to water them based on what medium it's growing in. So I have both of these growing in um, a mixture of sphagnum moss and orchid fir bark. So I have the bottom layer as moss here and then I alternate layers with moss and bark until the very top I do a layer of bark. So this is what I learned from a YouTube video uh, where I watched Miss Orchid Girl which is super super popular on YouTube and that's what she does with her orchids. So most of her orchids are grown in this like alternating medium of bark and sphagnum moss and this works really well for my environment as well despite mine not being super super hot like where she lives so i have pretty like intermediate temperatures they're just like household temperatures as long as i'm comfortable that's what my plants are living in so it's not super cold like 10 degrees and it's not super hot like 30 degrees so it's somewhere in the middle and i find this is a good way to help me water my plants so if it's in pure bark 
I find I have to soak my plants for longer. So I need to have it in a cover pot first of all. And I would fill the water all the way up to where the crown of the orchid is. So literally soak the entire orchid, but I only leave it in there for maybe like a few minutes. So not even five minutes. And then I completely drain it out and I just let the water that is absorbed from the moss wick up to the bark and kind of water the orchid. So that's what I like to do. If it were to be in completely uh, potted in just fir bark, then I would soak it for longer, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes. But because there is moss in there, it does retain some of that moisture. That's why I only soak it for maybe a few minutes. If I don't have a lot of time, I would just run it under the uh, faucet and just let the water go through and just put it back into its cover pot. I don't tend to do that often, but if I'm in a rush, I might do it. For the most part, I do do the soaking method of a few minutes and it works because of the mixture of medium that I have it in. When to water. So I like to check for roots, the color of the roots, and that is my indication of when to water my orchids. So right now I have all of my orchids potted into clear plastic orchid pots and that way you can see when the roots change color. Right now you can see that the roots are actually a green color. So these are the roots here. When it's green, it means it has water on the roots and it doesn't need more water. It's because I watered this orchid maybe just a few days ago. I would say, yeah, like three days ago. So I don't tend to need to water this more than once a week. Usually it's like seven to 10 days. When the roots kind of turn like a silvery white color, that's when I usually water my orchid and I do the whole soak it for a few minutes and then I just pour out the excess water. But yeah, it's really helpful for beginners to have clear orchid pots so that you can see the color of the roots and you can kind of see when the moss changes color. When it's a lighter color, that's when it looks fairly dry and a combination of checking the roots and checking for the medium to be dry, that's when you water it. Because Phalaenopsis don't need a whole lot of water, they don't need to be consistently moist like other orchids. They could dry out a little bit in between, so that's how I usually use this indication for when I need to water my orchids. So I think that pretty much concludes the light, humidity, potting medium, and watering schedule of my Phalaenopsis. Last but not least are the flower spikes. So how I can tell when my orchid is spiking is when in between the leaves, a little flower spike will come out. So the difference between a root coming out and a flower spike coming out is the shape. So if you look for something like a mitten shape, that's when you can tell that a flower is going to come out. Something like this one. So this one, another Phalaenopsis, it's the Phalaenopsis little one. So as you can see, there's this like flower spike coming out right here that's forming, forming little buds. So this is the tip that usually comes out. So it has like a little unique shape. It looks like a mitten versus a root would just be like a little nub. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's usually how I could tell. Honestly, if you wait just like a week or two, you'd be like for sure able to tell. But when it's first coming out, if you see a little mitten shape, that's when you know it's gonna be a flower spike. They like to grow in between the leaves like that and they don't generally grow from the top but if it grows from the very top that's usually a terminal spike and that's not what you want because that means the orchid will never bloom after that terminal spike <laughs> and you'll have to hope that it forms a cakey which is kind of like a clone of itself so it forms like a little baby plant and that's when you can remove it once it becomes more mature i'm not too familiar with cakey so i don't really want to touch on that topic too much but yeah, that's pretty much what I do with my Phalaenopsis and they've been pretty easy for me. So if you're thinking about getting into kind of the world of orchids, I would say the best is to start with Phalaenopsis and maybe kind of venture out from just like the regular grocery store ones. So these ones are definitely not grocery store ones like this Phalaenopsis Bellina. They're smaller, they have kind of shinier, rounder, thinner leaves versus um, the grocery store ones which are more common and they're mass reduced. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it helpful in some way or another and you guys get into orchids yourself as well. 
So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.